Today we're gonna make our player cutout look really shiny. So we've got our document started with this Terrence Mitchell cutout. I've given him foot shadows. Also added some elements to the top just to round out the poster design. So let's start by going up to filter, camera raw filter, and this is gonna allow us to tweak the lighting and colors right off the bat. So I'm always gonna push the exposure up when we're going for this shiny effect. And then also creating contrast by boosting the contrast. Then when you up the shadows in particular, we're bringing up a lot of those dark tones, which kind of gives it this nice glossy look. So I want to keep those shadows high. You can keep the highlights down a bit. And going into your effects, I always bump the texture and clarity a good amount. And then if you go down to detail, let's up the noise reduction. This is just going to smooth out all of the little graininess you have in the original image. So this smoothness I've found is really helpful in achieving this shiny effect. Then if you want, you can up the sharpening which just kind of brings more definition to these edges. So in general, this is kind of like a high contrast, smooth look to the whole thing. So we'll hit okay. And already it's looking a lot shinier than when we started. So we'll keep adding some effects. We're gonna go into our curves adjustment layer and you can clip this to the cutout by holding option, hovering in the space and then clicking. So now we're only affecting the cutout. First, we're gonna work on the highlights of this image. So I'm gonna bring up the curves layer just from picking a point in the middle. And then we're gonna invert this mask that's on the curves layer. So hold Command and hit I to invert it. So now we're hiding all of these curves adjustments. And now with a soft brush, I'm gonna bring the flow down to like 40%. This is also kind of a critical part of this player retouching method. You want the flow decently high. If you weren't making the shiny effect, normally I'd have the flow down around like 10%, but because we want more contrast and a little more aggressive, shading and highlights, we're gonna keep the flow up around 40%. And now with a white brush, we're gonna start revealing parts of this curves layer. And we're just gonna to touch up the already highlighted parts of the image and then also the eyes. So we can add some brightness to the eyes and paint a bit on the nose. And we're just looking for like the parts that are already naturally bright. And you should be switching your brush back and forth between white and black to kind of reveal and then hide and taper out parts of these highlights. And this part's gonna take the most time of this whole process, so I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. Really pay attention to the wrinkles in the jersey. I found that gives it a really nice effect. So there we have our highlights. You can see a quick before and after. We're gonna do the same thing with the shadows. Let's make another curves layer. Again, clip it to our cutout layer, and then we'll bring these down from the middle and again, invert this mask with command I and then same process as before, just painting on the dark parts of your image and really creating that contrast that's gonna sell this glossy, shiny effect. So those are our curves effects. You can see again before and after. We are now going to fine tune the colors a little bit. So I'm gonna add a selective color adjustment layer, again, clipping it. And we just want to boost the reds. I found when you boost the reds of the skin tones, it really helps the whole thing pop a bit more. We can even adjust the magenta and maybe we lower the yellows. I found this gives it a little bit more realistic of a feel. And you can also desaturate the colors we don't want. So this green, yellow on the disc and a little bit on his shoes. We can bring in a hue and saturation layer. And again, clipping this, let's go to our yellows and just desaturate those. If you bring it all the way up, you can see what areas it's affecting. It's really not too much of the skin tones. You can even bring that below the selective color layer. So now we're, we're getting rid of the color in the disc, making it pure white. And then there's not a ton of green in this image, but we wanna desaturate those as well. And this is just giving it like as clean a look as possible. It maybe desaturated his leg a bit too much. So you can always come in with a black brush and bring back the parts that you don't want the adjustment layer affecting, maybe also under his neck. The next thing we'll do that'll really sell this effect is put an inner glow on the entire cutout. So if you go to your cutout layer, go to your effects and select inner glow, we're gonna keep this white inner glow set to screen and we'll keep it on full opacity for now just to see kind of the extreme of the effect. But we wanna lower the size and just creating this real soft glow on the outside. So maybe six pixels is a good starting point. You can see it's kind of hiding bits of his hair, but we can clean that up ourselves. So we'll hit okay on the mask of our cutout. Maybe we just wanna hide the bits of his hair that 
are kind of getting cut off anyway by this glow. And then you could also fine tune this glow effect if you didn't want it affecting like the entire cutout. For example, down by the foot shadows, I would definitely get rid of the glow there. So we can right click on the inner glow effect in our layers panel and then go to create layer and we'll hit okay. This is creating the glow as its own layer. So we can now put a mask on it, clicking our mask icon down at the bottom and then mask out the parts that we don't want. So really just down by his shoes is what sticks out to me. And I wanna add some more darkness too, just to sell the foot shadows. We can also clean up some of the edges on our initial cutout make it blend a bit more onto the surface that he's standing on. The last thing we'll do is add a little bit of flair to various parts of the image. So let's make a new layer. And if you haven't watched my video on creating brushes for sports design, you can click here, I'll leave the link. But I have this custom flare brush, increase the flow back to 100, but it kind of creates these like little sparkles. So we're gonna add a few of these. One I'll put on the chain, kind of right in the middle, and we'll put another on the corner of the disc here. Maybe I blow it up a little bit. And we can put another one like, I don't know, maybe on his shoulder. And of course you can go back and fine tune these effects. Like if you wanna up some of the, the highlights that are coming in from our curves layer, you can always adjust the curves layer settings. Maybe we wanted it boosted a bit and then same thing with the shadows. Basically the more you lift or lower these points on the curves layer, the more or less extreme the effect is gonna be. So we can keep things like that. We can also always go back into camera raw filter just by double clicking. And maybe we want some more just overall brightness can boost the exposure even further, really push those limits and create this shiny look. Hope this video was helpful in inspiring your next design. As always, let me know if you have any questions.